Well, I'm thankful to be here this evening. I was thinking that the one song, to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Aren't you thankful that you know that his hand is there in Isaiah 59? It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, and neither is his ear uh, heavy, that he cannot hear. Aren't you glad that his, ear, that his hand's not too short, that he, that he is here to save his children, the, uh, the ones that are willing to call after him, the ones that are willing to, to, to live the life that he, that he wants uh, them to live. He, those are the ones that, are, that he's reaching out to. Those are the ones that he can hear when they're calling, that uh, he doesn't ignore us, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, reach out for us, but he's there every step of the way. Uh, aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful if the only way you're going to change is by holding on to that unchanging hand? Uh, you're not going to change that first song that one of the songs talked about changing and or something to that effect. There's a, a phrase about changing, uh, but you're not going to change unless you're holding on to his hand. You can't do anything on your own, uh, no matter how big you think you are, no matter how strong uh, physically or strong phys or spiritually you think you are. You cannot do this on your own. You'll never make heaven your home on your own. And this isn't something you can just learn in some DIY book or watch YouTube and figure out how to make heaven your home. Uh, it, it, it's not about that. There's nothing you can do to just figure this out on your own. Uh, the only way to figure this out is by walking through these doors and listening to the ministry uh, teach us how to make heaven our home and letting the Lord guide the, uh, the words from the minister's mouth and, and listening and, uh, and putting those words into action in our own lives. Uh, we can listen to all we want to listen to and never put it in the action. It will never do any good. We're just listening, and we're put, it's coming in one ear and out the other. But when we begin to put it into practice, that's when we'll begin to see ourselves change. And I want to see myself change. I saw some dumb comment on Facebook today about uh, sitting in church and listening to hours of uh, minute. Like, what did it say, Amber? You remember what it said? But it, somebody had put uh, some kind of meme on there trying to be funny, but it talked about just sitting in hours and wasting their time listening to people just ramble. Uh, yeah, being held hostage because the, the ministry was taking too long. And, and how I, was, I just thought, how horrible is that? The, the, to bash the ministry, to bash even... And, and, and it, it wasn't funny in my mind. It, what was that? Yeah, I mean... It's just, it wasn't funny to me, and, and they, they, I guess they thought it was funny, and what's sad, other people thought that was funny. Other people were laugh, putting a little laugh emoji on the, on the person's page, and it just irritated me. It was just horrible. I don't care who the, the, if you don't like the man of God, or you think the man of God's taken too long, he is a man of God, uh, and they deserve all the respect that, uh, the, that they deserve. And whether you like them or not like them, or they've done things to hurt you in some way, they deserve uh, the respect that they're, that they're, that they're due. Uh, and Lord, let us always to have that respect for the ministry. Uh, I, I, I have so much respect for Brother Bobby, so much respect for other other ministers. I don't bash other ministers. Uh, I I look up to all the ministry. Uh, the Lord's the the Lord's there's honor due, and we are to give that honor due. But I, it, it just struck me that somebody that that claims to be a Christian, somebody that claims to be walking this way. Uh, has that mindset. It just shows me that they aren't walking the way that they are supposed to be walking, that they aren't doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. No matter how big they think they are, no matter how uh, much talent they think they have, uh, they're, they're not following the, the, the true word of God. They're not following the, the true ministry. That, that, that they're, It isn't all about the hooping and hollering. It isn't all about the singing. Uh, but it's about doing what the Lord wants us to do and, and the way that he wants us to do it. And that's all it's about. And But Lord, help us. I'm thankful that we're in a church that has uh, that the order that we have. There's so many churches that don't have the order, don't have the understanding, don't have the uh, the spirit of the mother, as Brother Bobby and Sister Amber mentioned the other day. It's so important, and I don't want to ever take what we have for granted. It doesn't take a huge church to to have what we have. It takes a, a good group of people to have what we have, a, a, a people that's willing to do what the Lord wants them to do, uh, not just outside of these doors, but inside of these doors as well. Uh, I think it was Sister Kathy, or somebody had said, we're, we're down to the uh, the ones that just the Lord wants us to have, and I'm I'm so thankful that He's that He's shake. It, it's sad to see people go, uh, but it's so good to feel what the Lord has in store. That all that loose, we were cleaning out some a dead a tree out there, and the a tree looks so much better when you take out all the dead stuff that doesn't belong. Not saying there is dead people in here, but uh, stuff that's not there can hinder that tree uh, from growing to per, uh, correctly. There was a little a dog run attached to that tree out back by the fence, and it had been there so long that it was digging into that tree and hurting the tree. Uh, you know, people can do that same way. People that aren't here, they're, uh, they, can hurt the, they can hurt the mother. Uh, they can 
say things, they can do things that will hurt the mother, uh, and, and it just cause harm. We may think it's innocent. You may think that little that little uh, dog run wasn't doing any damage, but once that uh, once that dog run was released from that tree, you could see the damage that it had done. Uh, but Lord, we're not here to damage the church. We're here to the, the we're here to help the church grow. And uh, I I spoke on in Cape on Tuesday about being ready, willing, and able. And it's been on my mind so much here lately to, uh, Lord, I, I'm ready and I'm willing, and, and the Lord will make me able. Uh, it's not about having ability to when you start. You don't start with an ability. The Lord provides that ability. Before you, but before you ever get that ability, you have to be ready, and then you have to be willing. And if you're not willing, you're not going to be able to do anything. Uh, there's people here that are not here because they weren't willing to, to do what the Lord's asked them to do. They weren't willing to change. And be, because of that, they're, they weren't able to stay here. And because of that, they may not be able to stay anywhere. Uh, if, the, if you don't want to change and do anything here, I can't imagine you wanting to change and do anything anywhere else. It's a, it's a, it's a constant thing. You go from one church, you church hop, and t because there's a problem here, I'll go to another church. You'll find a problem there, I'll go to another church. You'll find a problem there, you go to another church. And that, that's a, that's a, 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 a series of repetition that you'll never get over until you get over it yourself. Uh, Lord, help us not to get in that rut that we let every little thing uh, hinder us from and moving onward. This is my home. And this place means, I think Amber said that on Thursday, that this is her home and this place means the world to her. Uh, this place means the world to me. Uh, I would do anything for anybody here and I would do anything for the church that I was physically and spiritually able to do. Uh, it, there's not a job too big or a job too small that I wouldn't be willing to do here. I, I'm not a fan of getting on the roof uh, just because I don't want to fall off the roof. And uh, But I would, if I had to get up there and do something, I, I, I would if we didn't have any other options. Um, but the Lord knows my heart. I, I'm not a big fan of crawling on the roof, or not crawling, but walking on the roofs. Um, but we have to use wisdom sometimes when it comes to certain things. Um, and I'll hire, we can hire a professional when it comes to doing the work, uh, the roof stuff, if it's up to me. But, uh, but Lord, I want to be able to work. I don't want to be separated from the Lord. And that, that second verse in that 59 of Isaiah talks about, but your iniquities have separated you from you and your God. The things that we do, the sins that we commit, yeah. the acts that we uh or live our lives and can separate us from living the life that we can be pleasing to the Lord. I don't want to ever be separated from God. And said, so between you and God and your sins and can, your sins have hid His face from you, and you will not hear. Do you want to be hidden from the Lord? Do you want uh, Him to not be able to hear you? Uh, that'd be horrible to be in that state of uh, mind. And what's sad, there are so many people living in that scene that don't that sin that don't realize that they're. That, the, that they're in a place where they're hidden from the Lord, that their, their sins have separated them from living the life that they should be living. I don't want to ever be in the position, and I don't think anybody here ever wants to be in the position where the Lord doesn't know where I am, or the Lord refuses to hear me. Uh, and the only way to know, I know to not ever let that happen is to live a life uh, for Him. Uh, there in, there's some other scriptures and Proverbs that went along with this. I think it was Proverbs 1. Uh, Proverbs 1 and 24. Uh, because I have called and you have refused. I have stretched up my hand and, and no man hath regarded. Uh, how horrible would that be to stretch out your hand? Uh, if the Lord stretches his hand and we don't stretch our hand back forth, that he's just, uh, and then there's many people that he's done that to, that uh, from here and other churches where he stretched out his hand and people just refuse. They walk, they literally, God's hand is right there and they turn their back and walk the other direction. Uh, how could you do that to our, our to our Lord and Savior? But yet people still do it. And they're 25. But you have set not at my counsel, and would none of and would not and would none of my reproof. I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock, and your fear cometh when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, uh, when distress and anguish cometh unto you. Uh, then you shall cry, call. Then you shall call upon me, and I will not answer. Uh, but they shall seek early, and they will not find me. How horrible is that to, to get in that situation and to know I, I got to call on the Lord, but you've lived your life so much the, the wrong way uh, that he doesn't hear us anymore, that he's not going to be there for us, that he's not going to answer your call. Uh, we, we've turned our back on the Lord. Uh, I don't ever want to get to that place that we, and, and, and if I keep my, my, uh, my foot to the pedal and keep going and walk through these doors every time the doors are open, I won't have to worry about that. There's things that we won't have to worry about. If, we, if we're living our life for the Lord, you don't have to ever, ever have to worry about the Lord uh, not listening.
the Lord not answering a prayer, the, nor, the Lord not being there for you, the, the Lord giving our children the Holy Ghost, the Lord saving us from, um, from uh, destruction and sin and, and distress, all the things that we go through, the Lord can deliver us from that. Uh, but if you're not living your life for the Lord, he's not, there's, no, uh, there's no promise that he will deliver you from that. I can guarantee you there's no guarantee that you're not going to get into heaven for sure. Uh, if you're living that way, if you're living your life of, of sin and, and sorrow, and it doesn't matter if you're a good person. It doesn't matter if you go to church every day on Sunday. Uh, it doesn't matter if you go to church Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you're still living that way outside of these doors, you're not going to make your way to heaven. Uh, you have to be willing to change. Um, and which sometimes change is hard. Uh, there's different things that was going on at work, and it, it, it's causing a strain on me. We're trying to change some processes, and it's things, it's slowing me down because of this process. It's not a big, I'm not a fan of change. Um, but without change, uh, things can go wrong. We're doing this to put things in better and act, so we're better, to, we're better protecting the company by making these changes. Uh, but it's slowing me down because there's more processes to get a piece of paper out the door. Um, but by doing this, we're protecting ourselves. Uh, we go through different things and the changes in our in our lives and our spiritual situation to better ourselves. Uh, when we're when we're here and we go through certain things, um, and certain things will better ourselves. We go through things to like Brother Bobby was mentioning, uh, listing off different things on Thursday that he will that he can set us free from. Um, and we it takes sometimes it takes certain trials and certain tests to overcome those things like anger and the and, and all the different things that he listed anger is one of my big things that I go that I have that I deal with um, but by going through little things that he can set in our path or little little bitty things uh, it can help us overcome those uh, little th sometimes they're little things but sometimes they can be big things we can turn little bitty things into uh, huge things anger can turn into wrath and and malice and all this different thing it can go it can grow and grow and grow uh, but if we can nip it in the bud before it ever gets to that part, if we let the Lord change us, then we can we can have a better life than what we ever thought we could live. But and, to, and then 28, then he should call upon me. I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, uh, for they have hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Uh, they would not. They would not. They would none of my counsel. They would despise all my reproof. Therefore, they shall not eat of the fruit of their own way. Or they for they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and not be filled with their own devices. And that devices there is not like a tablet, it's not a computer, it's not an iPad, it's not a phone, but that, if I, if I remember right, that device is their, their own counsel, their own thoughts, and uh, their own intentions. Um, and Lord, that's the one thing that will get us in trouble, is our own counsel, our own thoughts, our own intentions. Uh, that's what gets us in trouble when we do things our own way. Uh, we want to listen to the uh, the ministry when it gives counsel. We want to listen to the Lord when, it, when the Lord provides counsel, and the Lord will provide counsel. The Lord will direct us if we're willing to listen. There's so many things that we have to be willing to do when it comes to serving the Lord, willing to change, uh, willing to listen. Uh, and different. Those are just the two that just popped in my mind. But there's so many things that if we would just sit back and, and listen to what the Lord is saying and, and, and uh, be obedient to what the Lord is saying, our life could be so much better. Um, but when we, let her, when, we, when we are filled with our own devices, how much, how much more our life can go, to, uh, go bad. But then for turning away the simple shall slay them and prosperity to the fool shall destroy them. Uh, but whosoever hearkened unto me shall dwell safety and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Uh, it, it's super. It's simple. The whoever will, will just dwell with the Lord and hearken to what he is saying, uh, we can have that safety. We can have that peace. We can have that uh, sense of mind that the Lord is always there. Um, and you wonder why people leave. You wonder why people leave this and, and want to do their own thing. It, it, it just baffles me. Even though I was, I was one of them, I can look back and see all the mistakes I, I made. Uh, what it the, the mistake it was to leave the Lord, and there's so many people that have left the Lord and don't see the mistake that they're making. Uh, they don't see that they're making any mistake. They don't see that they're doing anything wrong. And what's sad, when a lot of people leave, they continue to hurt the church when they leave. They continue to work in iniquity. Uh, they worked iniquity while they were here, and they continue to work iniquity when they're gone. Uh, what's, the, what's the point? What are, you, what's, what are we trying to do? But Lord, help us to do what He always wants us to do, and work the way He wants us to work, and uh, there in Titus, I read the scripture in Cape the other night, but uh, two and Titus two and eleven for for the grace of God and bringeth salvation that he appeareth to all men, teaching us that defying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Uh, but what happens if we don't? Uh, we can be taught and we cannot listen. What happens if we don't deny ungodliness? We don't deny worldly lust. We don't live sober. We don't live righteously. We don't live godly in this present world, what happens to us? We'll die in this present world. Uh, this will be the only world that we ever get to live in. 
Um, but we're looking to live in a life greater than this world here. This life is it's just, we're just, I think I said on Tuesday, we're just uh, pilgrims passing through. Uh, we're just here just to, uh, to serve the Lord. We're here just to get by. We're here doing what we have to, to to live in this world, but I am not a part of this world. I do what I do to, to, to support my family. I do what I do to support the church. I do what I do to support the church. It comes first, and then I do what I do to support my family. Uh, but we're, we're here just to pass through. Uh, but the, the next 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of all God and and. Great God of Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us, that we might redeem from all, redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto Himself a peculiar people, zealous in all work. He can, He can redeem us. He can, He can purify us from all that iniquity, all that sin that we commit. The Lord can save us from if we're willing to be saved, if we're willing to, uh, to ask for the help that we need, if we're willing to ask for that uh, redemption, if we're willing to say we're sorry, if we're willing to change our lives. That's all it takes is a, a, a heart that's willing to change. And be who the Lord wants us to be. Uh, it's not that hard to change. It's not that hard to give up some of the things. And all the things I've gave up are, are nothing uh, compared to what the Lord has offered. Now, I, I, is, is hanging out with a couple of friends really worth dying over? Is, is, is drinking every once in a while worth dying over? Is uh, not missing a couple of services worth dying over? And there's so many things. Our, li our, our Lord and Savior is worth so much more than just some of these things that we think are so important. Our jobs can be so important in our lives. Our family can be so important in our lives. Our, our friends can be so important in our lives. Our, our fun things that we do can be so important in our lives that we forget what the most important thing should be. And I know when I'm speaking here tonight, all these everybody here has put in the Lord first. We're here every, almost every single service. Everybody is here every Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you won't find that. I know Brother Bobby said the same thing. You, you won't find that everywhere you go. Uh, you can go to a church over any, any of the body churches. You can go to a lot of people don't show up in midweek services. Uh, they just don't. People have other things to do. Uh, whether you go to Cape or you go to Paducah, or those are the two churches, the churches that are around. But I guarantee you, if you go to their midweek service, there are people there on a Sunday that are never there in their midweek services. They don't think the midweek services are important. But I know everybody here realizes how important uh, every midweek service is, every Saturday service is, every Sunday service is. Every service is just as equally important. Sundays aren't better than Thursdays. Thursdays aren't better than Saturdays, and, and you can do that all on. Every service is equally important. Every service deserves everybody to come out every single time the doors are open. It takes a willing heart to, uh, to, to, to do that. Not everybody wants to make it out. Not everybody wants to change. Um, but I'm so thankful that I'm a part of a church that everybody wants to change, that everybody wants to do just a little bit more uh, today than they did yesterday. They want to, to grow just a little bit more than they did yesterday. Uh, and then the rest of this chapter, uh, who gave themselves for us that we might redeem, all of our, redeem us from all of our iniquity and purify us unto a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Um, but I'm so thankful that we have a place that the Lord will, will help and work with us. He'll, he will give us the ability. You know, when the Lord chose his 12 to walk with them, they weren't preachers from the start. They weren't apostles from the start. They weren't anything from the start. Uh, Matthew was a tax collector. Uh, many of the other ones were just fishermen. And they weren't fishers of men. They were fishers of fish. Uh, but they were just regular people. Uh, I don't think it shows what every other man did. Uh, I know there's just a few that actually showed the profession. But none of them were in the ministry at all. And the, the Lord had to give them that ability uh, to be fishers of men. They had to change the profession that they had to do the profession that the Lord gave them. Uh, the, but and that just shows you that the Lord does the work. It isn't the man that does the work. It's the the work that the Lord does the work through the man. He gives the man the ability. He gives the the women the ability. He gives his people the ability to work the way he wants them to work. You don't have to worry about doing a big thing. There's so many people that just want to do a big thing, and if they're not doing the big thing, they don't want to do anything. Uh, but any position in the house of the Lord is far greater than any position out in this world. Uh, there's not a position out in this world that I would want, that I would be willing to take over my place here. And it, my place here could be any place here, whether I was sitting in the, the PA booth or playing an instrument or sitting on the congregation or sitting here on the platform. There's nothing that's greater outside of these doors than being right here. And, and not just in the body, but right here on 228 Missouri Avenue. This is where the Lord's placed me. I can't have the same part that I have here that I have just any in any church. I couldn't go to Paducah and have the same uh, the same spot or, uh, or Cape in the same spot or, or St. Louis or anywhere you want to list. The Lord's placed us here. If you're here tonight, the Lord's placed you here. 
this is where he wants you to work. This is where he wants you to grow. This is where he wants you to change, uh, to be that vessel that he wants you to change into. It takes being in that potter's hand for us to change. Um, and being willing to, to go through the fire when he puts us in the kiln, when he puts us through the fire to become perfected, to be become that perfect masterpiece that he's called us to be. Uh, but it takes will it takes willing vessels. That's all that's all the Lord is asking for is a willing vessel, a willing vessel that he can use in his own way, that he can mold in his own way, that he can shape and 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 purify in the way that he chooses. The, the shape and, and purify. It may not always feel good every single time we go through things, and it's not always going to feel good every time we go through things. It, it just doesn't. Uh, but if we're willing to stand in the fire, stay in the fire, uh, and go through all the things that the Lord wants us to go to, there's no telling what he, we will, we, what we can become. Uh, I want to be who the Lord wants me to be, and that's He's asked us all to be overcomers. He's asked us all uh, to make the bride. But that 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 decision to overcome, that decision to try to make the bride, is up to every individual here. Um, I, uh, I would love to see everybody make the bride. I would love to see everybody overcome. Um, but that's up to everybody here. I told this dream in Paducah and I'm going to tell, or Cape, and I'm going to tell it here, uh, just because I'm talking about the bride, but uh, it talked about getting the abilities and there's, I've had a lot of, um, uh, struggles in my own life of feeling insecure and the Lord's helping me with that. I don't feel near as insecure and that I used to feel the Lord's bringing me out of my my comfort zone. He's bringing me out of my shell and, and helping me along the way. Every time I stand, every time I sing, every time I do anything for him, the Lord's helping me and the Lord will help all of us. But in this dream, I was, I was sleeping uh, and I woke up, it was midnight. And I remember looking, I was looking at myself in, in, the, in the bed uh, when I, in the dream, it was like looking at a, but if I was in the first person watching myself and I look, saw myself and I saw myself look at the clock and it was midnight. And I, in that dream, I walked up and got out of bed and walked into the living room where our piano's at and sat down and started playing the piano. And uh, I had this dream several years ago and the Lord had brought it back just a couple nights ago. And I sat down and started playing the piano. And uh, before too long, I had started writing words on a piece of paper uh, to the songs I was I was writing. I began singing and singing in tongues and writing the music as I as I wrote the words. And um, Amber had Amber had woke up and when she woke up, she came in and saw me. And before too long, she's like she called her mom and dad and said, "Hey, mom, you got to come, you got to come see this. What the Lord's doing for Michael." And um, before uh, before too long, they had arrived. And by the time the end of the dream was done, I had wrote 144 songs. Um, and I had closed the book and the. The, the title of that book said the, the the songs of the bride and and you know the Lord's going to rise get a rise men up that's going to be able to sing that song of of Moses and the Lamb to bring the people in uh, to, to to allow them to have a place to come to He's going to say come out of her my people He's going to come and let these people hear a message that they've never heard before a message that will inspire a message that will change their lives that's what we're looking for a message that was willing to change our lives and this is the message that we teach that is. It's changing lives each and every day. It's changed my life. That when I walked through these doors 15 years ago, my life began to change. Uh, not for the worse, but for the better. Uh, I became a better person as I walked through these doors. And every single time I walk through these doors, every time I, I live outside of these walls and I live my normal life, I become a better person because I'm living these, I'm living these words each and every day. I'm not a perfect overcomer yet, um, but I am overcoming just a little bit more every single day. And that's because I'm listening to these words. I'm holding on to what's being taught out of this Bible. Uh, this is our lifeline. Uh, we get our, our life comes from the words that are preached out of this book. This isn't just some book that I know Brother Donald used to go say that all the time, that this is a special book. You can't place like you couldn't place your drinks on it. You can't just set anything on. This book is our life. Uh, these are the blueprints to heaven right here. This is how we get to heaven if we're willing to listen and willing to read and willing to uh, to adjust our lives and change our lives to what this is being uh, what this is said. And then we can be that overcomer that He's called us to do. Uh, but if we're not willing to change, if we're not willing to to listen to the message going forth, uh, there's so many people that don't want to listen to the message. They just want to sing a song and and hoop and holler and jump up and down and 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 and, and get drunk on the spirit. Um, but you're not even, it's, it doesn't matter if you're not going to be, the word is what changes us. The word is what is going to make us an overcomer. Listening to what uh, come out of these, comes out of the, the ministry's mouth with, by using the Lord through them. And I don't want to just listen to a man and nobody wants to just listen to a, a man speak, but a man of God is a totally different thing. A man of God can help produce, uh, 
can help uh, uh, pave the way for overcomers to to make it. And if, if 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 that's the only thing I do, I can do in my 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 spiritual career is and help somebody lead them to the to Lord and help somebody uh, be an overcomer or make the bride, then my, I'd say my walk is successful. Uh, Lord, I, that's uh, even if I don't make the bride myself, and I, but I, and I can lead somebody that way. Lord, let me let me lead somebody that way. Uh, Lord, that's all I want is to lead somebody to, to find the Lord and stay in love with the Lord. Um, there's nothing to fall in love with out in this world. And we can love our families, we can love our friends, uh, but we can't be in love with the things of this world. Uh, we have to be in love with the Lord, be in love with the church, uh, far greater than we can be in love with anything else. And if we're willing to put those things first, willing to do those things, uh, the Lord will make a way for each and every one of us. The Lord will make a way uh, for our families to come in. Our Lord will make a way for a place for our families to come into. This isn't just for the, uh, the 25 or so people that are here. We're getting things ready for the many people that are going to come in. Uh, it takes the people that have the, the understanding first. No, if we all came in at the exact same time, none of us would know anything. Um, you don't put a student in front of the classroom and expect that student to teach. It takes somebody that's been in the classroom, that's gone through the, the courses, uh, that's became, uh, that's got all their credentials, that's got, and I'm not talking about school credentials when it comes to the ministry, but I'm talking about the credentials that the Lord gives the ministry uh, through him. It takes going through all that for somebody to come into and, and hear in the word, and that's what's going to change. We're getting things ready for the people to come in. We're going to be a church that the Lord's going to use. I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to use us in a very special way. Uh, but it's going to take each and every one of us to continue to walk through these doors, continue to do what the Lord wants us to do, and we can be successful here in Sykeston. We already are successful here in Sykeston. There's already been lives uh, here that have been uh, re been born. I was, there's been people that have said nothing's been done since like William Souders, Brother William Souders' times. That the church has been in a, a, a halt since then. Uh, you say nobody's gotten the Holy Ghost since Brother Souders' time. Nobody's gotten saved since Brother Souders' time. Nobody's been healed. Nobody's had their life changed since Brother Souders' time. I, I, I beg to differ. Uh, every single person here has been has gotten the Holy Ghost besides the young ones. And one of these days, their life would be changed just as ours. But everybody here, the Lord has done something in their life to let you know that the Lord's still doing something with his people. Uh, it's not just about what he did and I'm so thankful for our elders. We wouldn't be here today without the elders and the the path that they uh, the path that they trod. I was thinking on uh, Tuesday, I ran for Brother William Souders. And he started this work back in 1914. That was 110 years ago uh, that he's been working. He, he wanted his he wanted his gospel preached back then, and he still wants his gospel preached today. Uh, he still wants his his church to go on today, just like it did then. And it takes the people that are willing to do that for this church to go on. And I'm I'm thankful that I'm a part of that church.